Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look back at how to set up a basic 5M server. A lot of things have changed since we last recorded this video and we last did the video as there is now something new called TX Admin. So the way that TX Admin works is we need to create a new folder first as a place to put our 5M server files. So I'm just going to call this a tutorial server and you don't want spaces but you can do an underscore like that so we can call this folder tutorial server and now we need to go actually get our files so you want to head over to 5m's website 5m.net there will be a link down in the description in order to get to that you want to click on create your own server and you want to click on host your own server and it'll bring you over to this stuff here. It'll give you some kind of quick rundown on what TX Admin is and how to do that. But for us, what we need to do is we're actually not on the right page. I don't think. Oh, no. Artifact server right here. Download server. And we're going to grab the latest version of the server and click download. See, it downloads right here. We can then open this up. And we'll be have to open up our folder here. And we'll just be able to drag and drop all of these files straight over like so. So once all the files are over here, we can go ahead and scroll down and double click on FX server. And it should immediately pop you up and throw you to a page like this. So we have to click link account, and that'll bring us over to here. Now it will probably ask you to sign in with your 5M Forms account. So if you have a 5M Forms account, go ahead and do that. But because I'm already signed in on my computer, uh, it's not asking me to do that. So it wants us to type in a backup password, put in a password that you will remember, and then click on save. And then here, it'll say, welcome, your name, obviously. And it will want you to give a rundown on what you want to do. So in our case, because we're going to be implementing our own scripts and doing things like that, we're just going to click Next. I'm going to call this Tutorial Server. Click on Next again. And we're going to do Local Server Data. So it wants us to give the name and location of the server. So in order to do that, just simply go into your server folder and copy the URL that it has for the uh, file locations. Excuse me. And then right-click and paste that in here and click Next. And it looks like we have this issue right here. For me... It says that, hey, there is a resource set in our old 5M tutorials server folder, but we don't want that. We're building up a brand new server here. So we want to head back over to our setting up of a 5M server, which this will actually be the link down in the description. And we want to, where is it? So we have the artifacts. We need to go and... Copy CFX server data. So open that in a new tab. It'll take us over to GitHub. And then we can go ahead and download this zip here. Open it up. Go in here. And all we need out of here is our resources folder. So then just go ahead and drag and drop that over into here. Over into your main server set of files. Because now we can go back here. We can click next. And it's going to accept that. So again, go paste, and then do slash server.cfg, and click save. Again, this file doesn't exist or it's unreadable. That's because we haven't created it yet. It will give you errors like this, which is a good, uh, which is a good thing, as it will tell us whether or not that file is there. So we simply just need to right-click, new text document, and call it server.cfg. 
rename the file. We have a con our config file. And then if we click save, there's no endpoint. It's because it's a blank file. So we can now go over to here and copy this set of stuff right here. Click on copy. We go back to our server.cfg. In my case, I double click it to open it because I use Visual Studio Code. Um, but you can also just right click it and click uh, edit with Notepad++. There'll be a link to Notepad++ down in the description. It is honestly a good uh, editor, text editor, but I will also link Visual Studio Code if you would prefer to use that. Instead, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code throughout this entire tutorial series, as that's just what everything is default set to in my case. So we're just going to right-click, paste, and control S. We don't need to change anything in here. We can just close out of it and pop back over here to set it up and click save and save and start server. Could not authenticate server license key. Click OK. Because we actually haven't set our server key yet. Excuse me, so same thing as before. We go over to our CFG editor. You'll see down here where it says change me. So back over here in this list of stuff here up at the top, it is going to tell us to go over to Keymaster. It's going to ask you to verify whether or not you're a human. So in, the, in our case, we have to click on all images containing boats. And once you do that, I believe that's a boat there. It'll redirect us. It'll ask you to sign in. And it will ask you to get a key. So in our case, we are going to... Yeah, yeah. In our case, we're going to activate the dev server key. Uh, but you can just click on register. I've exceeded my key limit because I have three servers active. But we can inactivate that one. Click on register. You fill out your stuff here. So you would do your display name, whatever you want to call your server. The IP address. Um, without the port, use your public IP if you're hosting on your home network. Pick a server type, dedicated VPS, pre-installed game server, server provider, or other slash home host it. In this case, with this tutorial set, we would be doing other slash home host it, which provider you're using, and then you would just type in home host it. Verify you're not a robot and click generate. But in this case, I already have a key generated that we can use. So, you can go over here, click on this, and we are going to copy our key. Now this is going to obviously be blurred out because this is a key that we will be using. Our 5M server keeps trying to start because it keeps just trying to reboot into allowing us to have our license key. So just click OK. You can pop back over to here, our dashboard, and we'll click Stop. Kill the server, make sure it's offline, and then we can go back into our CFG editor, scroll all the way down to the bottom, right-click, and paste our code in. Once we do that, we can click on Save File, pop back over to our dashboard, and start our server. The server is online. You can see nothing popped up here, because everything is web-based now, which is really, really cool. And it'll give us a whole bunch of information here in our actual chat log, or in our console log. We can view the amount of resources. You can see the default res resources here. And everything that 5M gives us, or well, FX admin gives us, or TX admin, however you want to refer to it. As well as you can view the server log. You can edit the config file. You can view the diagnostics of the server. You can see how many resources are starting, your max clients, whether or not you have one sync enabled, what your host machine is running, your TX admin info and different things like that, your schedules, as well as your processes, and what, how much memory 5M is using, and different things like that. 
can go over here to your admin manager, add and create admins, and then you can view the TX admin log. And it can tell you here where people, where different people connected from and their IP address. So now that we have this started up and running, we can actually launch up 5M. And you'll see well, that we will be able to connect to our default server. So I guess it's popping up and telling me what my desktop name is for localhost. Uh, it is the first time seeing that. So that is interesting. But as you can see, it will let us join and log into our 5M server here. And one of the nice things about this and the way that 5M handles the stuff with web base now, thanks to the amazing, uh, it's actually was started out as a script for people to use. Um, but what we can do is we can tab back over into Chrome and you can see that I've logged in here, what my join date is, my session time, IDs, my history, we can ban the player for X amount of days, can DM, kick, different things like that. So you can see, pause our game audio here. We are in our server, but we can't do anything. So we can go ahead and close out of 5M. And we'll be able to see in our console that we did have myself join. So, you can pop back over to here. You can see that there's now no players online. We can go to our server log and we can see that I both connected and disconnected from the server. As well as you can click on that and you can view the different IDs and things like that along with it. So guys, thank you so much for watching how to set up a custom 5M server. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and tune in later this week uh, for another 5M tutorial where we cover how to set up and install ESX. Goodbye.